Hello, my name is Allegra Smith, and I am an instructor and PhD student in the English department at Purdue University. This video will teach you about using stasis theory, which is an ancient Greek rhetorical exercise, to figure out how to approach a research or persuasive writing project. The levels of the stases will show you specifically where your audience is at on the issue, where their misunderstanding generates from, and then how to begin addressing that misunderstanding. So without further ado, let's get started. Stasis theory is an ancient exercise originating from the rhetorician and philosopher Aristotle. Stasis theory helps speakers and writers find the true point of contention in an argument. Going through the stasis helps you to define and draw boundaries around an issue at hand. And this can be really helpful if you have an issue that's large, complex, or ill-defined. Something that it's a contentious debate, like climate change, or like funding for public education, or like species conservation. This helps you to conduct critical analysis and build knowledge about an issue in addition to helping you figure out the direction for your project. So here is Aristotle in all his marble bust glory, giving you the four different questions or levels at which stasis theory operates. Here are the stases. First, fact. Second, definition. Third, quality. And fourth, policy. Now, sometimes ancient Greco-Roman rhetorical theory gets a little bit dry and abstract and inaccessible, especially since the issues of the polis or the forum of the day aren't necessarily applicable to what we're thinking about now. So to help illustrate the stasis in action and to provide you with a model, we're going to talk about a contemporary argument with the help of one of my favorite scientific rhetoricians, Bill Nye, the science guy. So to begin with facts, issues of fact are about whether or not a thing is a thing, if it's happening, and what's maybe brought it about. So an issue of fact asks, did a thing happen? If we're operating at the first level of stasis theory, the stasis of fact, we're asking basically, is there a problem or an issue? How did it start? What's causing it? What changed to make the problem? And what are the facts here? So if we're thinking about the issue of climate change, Bill Nye the Science Guy would say, if he was discussing the stasis of fact, that climate change is a thing. It is a problem or an issue. In YouTube videos about climate change, Bill Nye explains that we're experiencing an abrupt increase in the Earth's temperature and 97% of scientists agree that this is not due to natural fluctuations. This is what's brought about the problem of climate change, and here are the facts here. Next up, the stasis of definition. Definition asks us to define the problem and to set some parameters around it. What kind of a thing is this thing? So some questions that guide the stasis of definition are, what exactly is the issue? What's the nature of the problem? What are the parts and how they're related? And also thinking about who or what is influencing how we define the issue. Subject matter experts, talking heads, scientists, cultural leaders, the media. On the issue of climate change, to offer a definition, Bill Nye says, climate change is caused by human activity. That's the nature of the problem. It's man-made. The burning of fossil fuels is causing global warming. This in turn creates catastrophic environmental consequences, like ocean acidification. So these are just some parts of climate change. And if Bill and I were to continue offering persuasive speech on the stasis of definition, he would continue giving additional parts of climate change and talking about how they're all caused by human fossil fuel burning activity. As we get more complex in the stasis, we get to the third level, which is that of quality. 
think of this as asking how severe a thing is. What level of bad or good is it? Where does it exist on the spectrum? How serious is the issue? Thinking and thinking about quality, we might also consider whom it might affect. Who are the stakeholders in the issue? Who's negatively impacted by something like a new school funding bill or the loss of an endangered species? What will happen if we don't do anything about the problem? And what are the costs of solving it? In the case of climate change, Bill and I would say that global warming is especially severe because it affects the entire population. For example, ocean acidification needs to be reversed as soon as possible because one billion people rely on marine life as their major source of protein. Rising sea levels also threaten many homes. Here's an example of Bill Nye setting the problem of climate change for one specific group of stakeholders, those living close to the ocean and whose livelihoods rely upon it. There are other ways to use the stasis of quality to talk about global warming here because it's a particularly complex problem with lots of different forms of impact. The final stasis is policy. So now that we know what a thing is, how it's caused, and how severe it is, we might consider what to do about the thing. We need to consider if action should be taken, who should be involved in the action, whom does the responsibility fall upon to address a crisis in, publication, in public uh, education or in healthcare? What should be done about the problem? What needs to happen to solve this? Important about the stasis of policy is you've got to reach the previous three stases to get here. If we don't agree about if something is an issue, we're gonna get sidetracked and we can't start discussing how to solve it. So you can see how these stases are sequential. On the issue of policy, Bill Nye offers individual options to help combat global warming. For example, recycling and reusing things, walking or using public transit, turning off electronics, eating less meat, and more locally grown vegetables and fruit. Again though, if someone doesn't believe in Bill Nye's assertions that climate change is a thing and a severe thing and a thing that affects all of us, they're not going to believe in his policy proposals for addressing it. So now you've seen how stasis theory is a sequential way to think about how audiences view a problem and then how to best reach your audience in a way that's compelling and based in your research. As always, if you have any more questions about writing or research, feel free to contact the Purdue Writing Lab and sign up an appointment with a tutor to discuss your specific needs. The Purdue OWL, or online writing lab, has more resources on stasis theory, writing, and research as well. Happy researching and happy persuading.